Shalom Aleichem. Welcome again to the Torah Learning. This week's parasha and parasha Tamor deals mainly with the Kohanim, that the Kohanim have to be holy, and now they become Tamei, only to the seven relatives, mother, father, brother, sister, wife, and a son or daughter. And the Kohen Godol cannot even become Tamei to his seven relatives, only a met mitzvah. Then the Torah goes into their status of marriage, that a Kohen, a regular Kohen, is allowed to marry only a girl who was never married, and a widow, but not a divorced woman. However, a Kohen Gadol, the Pasuk says, a Kohen Gadol Me'echov, Cohen who is greater than his brother, Ashayutzak el Rosho, Shemana Mishcha, that will pour on his forehead the special oil, Umile es the ador, and he fills up his hand, Lubosheta Tabagadim, to wear the special clothing, the eight clothing. So it says, Vehu Isha Biftileo Yikoch, that he's only allowed to marry a girl who was never married, Almana Grusha, a widow and a divorce, he's not allowed to take. So the question is, what's the difference? How come a regular Kohen is allowed to marry a widow and a Kohen Agadol is not allowed to marry a widow? What is the difference? What is the significance of this different rule? So there's an interesting targum that's brought from the Balatoisis that says a very, very deep thought that we'll have to explain. He says that the reason why a Korna Gadol is not allowed to marry a, a widow as opposed to a Kohen Hediot, a plain Kohen, is because we are concerned that on Yom Kippur, when the Kohen Agadol goes into the Kodesh HaKadashim and he beseeches upon behalf of the Jewish nation, we are concerned that perhaps he will want to marry a certain married woman and pray in the Kodesh HaKadashim that her husband should die in order that he should be able to marry her. So therefore, the Torah said that a Kohen Agadol is not allowed to marry a widow, that this option should not be available to the Kohen Agadol. He will not be able to pray on Yom Kippur in the Kodesh HaKadashim that that fellow Jew should die and he should be able to marry his wife. And this Balatosefit and this Targum needs an explanation. We know from the Gemara, the time of the Second Temple, there were Kohen Agadol who were not worthy of being Kohen Agadol. And they died when they went into the Kodesh HaKadoshim. So if we're talking about somebody that made it alive out of the Kodesh HaKadoshim, obviously he's a holy man. And in Yom Kippur, which is the holiest day of the year, when he goes into the Kodesh HaKadoshim, which is the holiest time of the year, how can we suspect the Kohen HaGadol that at this holy moment, his mind will be wandering off, that he wants to marry this lady, and therefore he will pray that her husband should die and he wants to marry her. I mean, this is, this is something that's out of ordinary. Definitely not appropriate. However, we can explain this with a thought. The Gemara and Sukkah talks about 
the Simchat Bet Sheva, great happiness and joyous, which was at each night when the Jews gathered in the temple to sing and dance and honor the Sukkot, the Samachta Bechagecha. So it's the Gemara brings over there, the Mishnah, that there was a certain mean apikoret, someone who mocks at the Talmud, the oral law, and he used to make fun and used to make all kinds of remarks, disparaging remarks regarding the holiday, Sukkot, to make fun. And the question is, why does the Gemara, what do we need to know, what's for us important, that this uh, Rasha made fun of the holiday? What, what, what do we need to learn? What, what do we have to learn from this? And the answer is that the Mishnah wants to show us that at the same holy moment that the Jews were happy and dancing for the joyous holiday, at the same time the Satan, the Yetzehara, was working and causing Jews to be wicked and to mock the holiday. And we know that Zel Umad Zeh, the power of evil has to be balanced with the power of holiness. So therefore, coming back to our thought, yes, the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur was the highest moment of the year, the holiness of holiness. But at the same time, his Yetzirah, his evil spirit, has to be also powerful, the same powerful, in the same level playing field as the holiness has to be also the wickedness. And that's why even in this holy moment that the Kohen Agadol is concerned in the Kodesh HaKadashim, the Yetzirah might come to him and tell him to please pray for this Jew, that this Jew should die in order that he should marry his wife. And therefore, the Torah says that a Kohen Agadol who has this power of going into the Kodesh HaGadoshim and praying is not allowed to marry a widow, only a single girl. Before we finish, I would like to share a story. This happened in this town of Krakow, which I was fortunate this year to be there and to be in the Jewish cemetery. And there, middle of the street and back of the cemetery, front of the synagogue, there is a gated area with a tree there. And this is a story about that gated area. It was approximately 400 years ago, the rabbi of the city was Rabbi Yitzchok. And there was a uh, conservative Jew at that time, his name was Shlomo Zeligman, who was a Kohen. And slowly he gave up Torah and mitzvot and he decided he wants to marry one of the divorced ladies in Krakow. And he went to the rabbi and told him that he wants to marry this woman. The rabbi said, but how could you? You're a Kohen. You cannot marry a divorced woman. And he said, but I don't care. He said, but the Torah cares. We cannot allow that. And the rabbi called in this woman, the divorced woman, and spoke to her and explained to her that if she goes ahead with this wedding, he's going to have to excommunicate her from the community because she's not listening to one of the commandments, one of the mitzvot in the Torah. So they backed off a little, but this man, this uh, Shlomo Zeligman, did not give up. He changed his name to Zegmend. And he finally went to the governor and impressed upon him that he should speak with the rabbi. And the governor called the rabbi and he said, What is your concern that he's a Kohen? He doesn't want to be a Kohen. 
he wants to, this Zygmunt wants to marry this woman, and I want you as the rabbi of Krakow to officiate at the wedding ceremony. And the rabbi told him, Governor, with all due respect, I respect you, but we have to listen to God. And in the Bible, there's a commandment that a Kohen is not allowed to marry a divorced woman. And I cannot go ahead and do this marriage against the Torah. <clears throat> Finally, when the day of the wedding came closer, he, the governor sent two soldiers to come and drag the rabbi to the middle of the town, in front of the synagogue, and perform the ceremony against his will. When the rabbi was standing there, the rabbi prayed to Hashem, and he said, Hashem, please help me get out of this situation. Aneni Hashem, Aneni. Like it says by Eliyahu Anabi Bahara Carmel, he said, answer me Hashem. And all of a sudden, there was the earth below the Chatana and the Kala started shaking. It opened up and swallowed them alive. The Chatana and the Kala, the Zygmunt and his bride was swallowed alive in front of everybody. The rabbi said that they should keep this gate around there, that the Kohanim should know not to go in this area in front of the synagogue, because there's two dead bodies over there. And this was an unbelievable show of faith and the hand of God that did not allow this Jew to violate one of the commandments in the Torah. Have a very good week. Hatzlacha. Kol